Hello. Hello. Morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for the intro, Tom. Uh, my name's John Blackburn. I am one of the core developers of WordPress, and uh, I've been work involved in the project for around nine years now. This talk, um, by the way, is going to be a little bit short because I'd really like to get some questions uh, from the audience, so please don't feel afraid to step up to the mic and ask questions at the end of the talk. So uh, WordPress is a teenager now. It's 13 years old. Um, and the software that it runs on, MySQL and PHP, is either, even older. 1995, these were introduced. So WordPress developers, we're working with technology that was first introduced 21 years ago. So WordPress is mature software. But what do I mean by that? Well, WordPress is well established. It uh, powers over 25% of the web now. We've got 40,000 plugins available in the plugin directory. We've got thousands of themes available. Uh, WordPress is proven. It powers some of the largest websites in the world. And it's stable. WordPress has a commitment to backwards compatibility that probably isn't matched by any other open source software project in the world. Uh, the, the core WordPress software evolves. It doesn't change too quickly. But the internet is a fickle place. Um, proponents of more modern software might call it old, they might call it bloated or boring or some other words that I can't really say up on stage. Um, so if this is the case, or even if it isn't, how can WordPress continue to move forward? How can it compete with much more modern PHP and JavaScript frameworks and all of this other new software that is available on the web? Well, let's start by looking at a few places where WordPress is already doing this. <clears throat> so responsive images, um, they're not too new, but good support in browsers is relatively new. Now, WordPress 4.4 introduced uh, responsive image support natively via the source set attribute. Um, this means you get responsive images for free on your WordPress website without you having to do anything. And due to WordPress's popularity, this actually had a measurable effect uh, this, is, um, this is a chart from Google Chrome's uh, feature reporting uh, tool for the source set attribute. Uh, this point right here is when WordPress 4.4 introduced support for the source set attribute. And due to the popularity of WordPress, it had a big impact on the usage of source set right across the internet on the Chrome browser. Uh, it's still relatively low, but it is climbing at a considerable rate. Um, the REST API, I'm sure many of you heard about the REST API. It's, uh, it's in WordPress core now, the infrastructure for the API. Um, the aim is to provide a modern, powerful, uh, and JSON-powered uh, interface to all WordPress websites. Um, the, the WordPress REST API will probably become the largest distributed API on the internet. Um, HTTPS work is ongoing in WordPress to improve support for HTTPS, which the web as a whole is rapidly moving toward. And that will enable us to then start looking at HTTP2 features, such as pipeline, uh, pipelining and maybe even some server push. So from a technical point of view, WordPress is perfectly capable of implementing modern user-facing web technologies. But moving WordPress forward isn't just about its technology. There's a bigger picture to think about. Uh, it's made up of many parts. So let's take a look at some of these parts. But first of all, just before that, I'd like to ask the question, what is WordPress? And we've, if we think about the answer to this question, it'll help us identify areas where WordPress can improve and move forward. So the description from WordPress to org is suitably vague. WordPress is web software you can use to create a beautiful website, blog, or app. So I guess that means you can use WordPress to build whatever you like on the web. Um, WordPress's mission statement actually is more representative, I think. Its mission statement is to democratize publishing through open source GPL software. And what that means is WordPress provides the opportunity for everyone to be a publisher through the use of free software. So with that statement in mind, Let's have a look at some areas where WordPress is moving forward well. Localization and internationalization. This is probably one of the most important areas where WordPress can um, increase its reach throughout the world, probably the area where it can grow more than any other. If WordPress doesn't speak your language, then it's hard for WordPress to democratize your publishing. 
Now, if we increase the number and the quality and the ease of use of translations in WordPress, then this is really key to moving the WordPress platform forward in terms of its, in terms of its reach throughout the world. Uh, we're doing quite well at this. Uh, hands up anyone who attended or was involved with the Global Translation Day back in April. Yeah, quite a few people. Um, the Translation Day was great. Uh, we had over 30 events around the world which came together to teach people about internationalization and localization. We had live training sessions and in-person meetups, and lots of people learned how to translate WordPress. We do local WordPress uh, word camps and meetups. Uh, many of these now are, include non-English tracks, which is a great way for non-English speakers to get involved with WordPress. And of course, we've got localized versions of the WordPress.org website now in many languages, and that includes the localized plugin and theme directories. Similar to localization, accessibility is an important part of enabling um, as many people as possible to start using WordPress. Now, the core coding standards for WordPress were recently updated to include this uh, accessibility statement. All new or updated code released into WordPress core and bundled themes must conform with, with the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines at level AA. Uh, this is really good news because typically, when you improve the accessibility of a piece of software, you don't improve the accessibility just for people with disabilities. You improve it for everyone. You improve the user experience. You improve the user interface. And uh, reminding developers of this is really key to improving the software and moving the platform forward. By the way, uh, level AA of the guidelines there, uh, they're really simple. They're not complicated. It includes uh, making your navigation easy to use and consistent, not using things like title attributes. It's, it's actually a really simple um, standard to adhere to. So we're doing quite well in those two areas, but let's have a look at some areas where we're not doing so well. Developer relations. Um, actually, I'm going to start with Drupal here. Uh, the lead developer of Drupal recently wrote an article called the Why, uh, Why the Big Architectural Changes in Drupal 8. And there's a choice quote here. The reason Drupal has been successful is because we always made big forward-looking changes. Now, modernizing its code base is Drupal's way of maintaining relevance and pushing the platform forward. But if you read this article, it turns out that maintaining relations with existing developers on Drupal is really tough when you make such widespread, platform-wide changes to the code. Uh, due to the learning curve that's involved of making such fundamental changes, it actually alienates a lot of your existing developer code base. I'd encourage everyone to go and read this article by Dries there, Why the Big Architectural Changes in Drupal 8. But of course, WordPress, on the ha other hand, has a really strong commitment to backwards compatibility. As a general rule, plugins and themes that were written for WordPress years and years and years ago will continue to work with the latest version of WordPress. Uh, this approach means that end users don't need to fear the upgrade process. Um, the idea is that it should be a seamless process. Um, but for the same reason, WordPress also maintains compatibility with old versions of PHP 5.2. Uh, this is a version of PHP that was uh, over nine years old now. And the reason we still support it is because actually over 7% of WordPress sites across the whole world still run on PHP 5.2. So the flip side of maintaining this backwards compatibility is that much of the code in WordPress is old uh, because it can be difficult to modernize old code uh, while maintaining backwards compatibility. So this means attracting developers, particularly new and young developers who maybe were introduced to the web via much more modern frameworks, JavaScript frameworks, PHP frameworks. It's really tough to attract them to WordPress when we're still having requirements such as supporting PHP 5.2. So developer relations, it's something that the project needs to work on really hard in order to move forward. Um, how do we reduce technical debt while maintaining backwards compatibility? How do we modernize the code base without alienating our existing developers? Um, all while maintaining a user-centric platform that doesn't expose things such as PHP requirements and dependency managers to the end user. It's a complicated process. I don't have an answer to this. It's something that the project needs to continue working on as a whole. And closely related to developer relations is the developer contribution, contribution process. 
Uh, we're really lucky at WordCamp Europe here this weekend that we're going to have a contribute today on Sunday with 500 attendees. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, now, contributing to WordPress doesn't involve just writing code. It includes testing, it includes trying bug fixes, it includes writing new features, testing new features, documentation, a whole bunch of stuff. But the process of introducing features to WordPress hasn't worked so well over the last few years. We've had some good results and bad results. Generally, the process of contributing uh, a new feature to WordPress has been via feature plugins. Uh, this is where a feature is built primarily as a plugin first, and it's built to the point where it's mature and it's stable and it's well tested, and then it's proposed for inclusion in WordPress core. Uh, this process has been partially successful on a few features. We've had some features that didn't work so well um, as a, maybe as a negative result of, a, uh, of the process breaking down or indeed as a positive result of testing that showed that the feature actually wasn't any good. So earlier in the year, Helen, who's one of the core developers of WordPress, introduced a change to the way that we approach new features in WordPress. Um, new features are now going to be thought of as projects instead. Uh, here's a quote from Helen. Most will start as ideas that need exploration to be more fully formed or fleshed out before implementation. Quite often, we're too fast to start writing the code before we've fully fleshed out ideas or before we've spec'd it or before we've planned it or done UX research. So the, the idea is that the whole process from idea through planning, research, design, implementation, testing, feedback, and the iteration on all of those will become part of the whole process of introducing a new feature to WordPress. Um, the aim is to attract and retain a greater um, range of skill sets in contributors. So instead of just PHP developers, we want to attract developers, uh, designers, we want UX engineers, we want project managers, you know, we want the whole lot. Um, the idea is to advance the knowledge in the WordPress community in general. So where does that get us so far? Well, localization, accessibility, developer relations, and developer contributions. If we can nail all of these, if we can get these right, what we'll actually have is a really compelling platform for large groups of underrepresented users. We'll have a compelling platform, developers who value stability and extensibility over the new fancy frameworks that might be around, and potential contributors who want to get involved in a real product design process instead of just diving straight into the code. These combined cover a big part of continuing to move WordPress forward in terms of its relevance and its reach. So let's get on to something a little bit more controversial, the project direction, or in my opinion, unfortunately, a lack of direction. This has the potential to be one of the biggest threats to the future of WordPress. Sorry about that. I'm just showing off my animation. There we are. So if we remember back to the description of WordPress from WordPress.org, we can see it's very open-ended. Uh, you could say that WordPress looks a little bit like all things to all people. Of course, the risk there without direction is that WordPress can become jack of all, all trades. A piece of software that attempts to cater to many people, but ends up being mediocre at uh, everything. It stems from the fact that WordPress originated as a piece of blogging software, but it's evolved. It now powers enterprise sites. Um, it powers, uh, it's got a REST API, which potentially uh, leads to a, a WordPress that's headless, that doesn't have an administration area. And a good example of this mediocrity that's in WordPress at the moment is the import and export functionality. Um, this is actually a completely useless piece of functionality to anyone who wants to migrate a really large site on WordPress, you know, enterprise sites. But it's actually also not very useful to the regular blogger because over time, bloggers accumulate a lot of content. So if you've got years and years and years worth of content, the importer and exporter still doesn't work because it doesn't scale, it doesn't perform well enough. So if WordPress had a bit more direction and, and the project said, hey, we're going to give small site owners a compelling reason to migrate to WordPress, or we're going to focus on WordPress being able to handle large scale imports and exports, then this feature would get improved. But because we haven't got that direction, 
this doesn't happen, and we end up with a mediocre piece of functionality. Uh, now, the REST API infrastructure that was introduced in WordPress 4.4 is great, but by default, you can't actually do anything with it because the endpoints that are needed to interact with the public data on your site don't exist in WordPress core yet. Um, the introduction of these endpoints has been delayed due to a lack of clear direction about what the purpose of the REST API is. Is it, a, uh, uh, is it an API that allows the public content of a site to be easily consumed by third parties, or actually is it an API that is intended to replace the whole of the WordPress admin area? The lack of direction on this topic has led to um, putting this feature in jeopardy and indeed um, considerable tensions within the community. So we need a plan. WordPress needs some longer term goals, goals which will drive the individual decisions around features and WordPress needs to allow input on its goals from the community, but more importantly, it needs some leadership that it's not really had over the last uh, few years. That's how WordPress will continue to move forward and maintain relevance. So, no, WordPress is not going to be rewritten in Node.js or anything, not, not anytime soon anyway. But that doesn't mean that it can't maintain relevance. If we focus on building a compelling platform, and we put great project leadership and project maintenance at its heart, WordPress can continue to move forward and maintain relevance, hopefully for another 13 years. Of course, if you've got a ticket for the Contributor Day on Sunday, you can come and help, help that vision. You can help WordPress achieve its mission statement. That's it from me. Thanks very much. <laughs>